I know that a lot of you, particularly if you you were you were our however you frame it, a Bernie Sanders supporter, you know, there's a lot of angst still. I mean, see you in Philly. Like, like it's 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 go time. We are less than a week away from the convention. All the delegates need to be there and everyone needs to be seated. But but part of why I think this conversation that we're getting ready to have is so important is because, like, you know, the old saying, like, you never know where you're going if you don't know where you come from. And, like, so revisiting, we don't need to recreate the wheel. We have so much rich history, especially when we look at the Black Power movement starting out of all these different youth and student groups, right? I mean, young people really drove a lot of what happened coming out of the, the, the 60s. Um and, and to some extent, you know, there are lessons to be learned for why things kind of fell off a little bit the way they did. How can we continue forward and not repeat some of the same mistakes of our past? What lessons about passion, drive, and struggle can we learn from the past, right, going forward? I mean, I mean, there's just, there's just, there's just so much to talk about. There's just such good stuff. But, but when you think about um, Stokely Carmichael, Kwame Ture coming out of, you know, student-led movements, right? Um, coming out of SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, um, and, and moving forward in the way that he did with his work and his life, you know, it serves as, you know, definitely go Google him and listen to some of his speeches on, uh, you know, I believe it should be on YouTube. Listen to some old, also, here's the thing. Listen to some old Martin Luther King, too, because I'm really tired because you need to be able to adequately combat people when they try to shut you down and say, well, Martin Luther King wouldn't like this. You know, there is a lot of appropriation. People do the same thing with Nelson Mandela. They talk about Nelson Mandela at 90 years old and absolutely disregard radical Nelson Mandela. You know, Nelson Mandela came out of jail still radical. He might have tempered down a little bit. But I mean, the fact that you came out of jail within like a year and a half, you're running for president and, and sending the clerk packing, that, that's, 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 that's a pretty bad memory, Jim. I mean, just say it. So there, there, as we talk about going forward, whether you are, you know, working with one of the new organizations that are forming out of this movement, whether you're already with an existing organization and you've already been doing work, whether you are done with presidential electoral politics and you're just focusing on state and local, whether you're just a community worker and voting is just not for you, we need to make sure we figure out how do we fit in, where do we fit in, and how do we continue to engage and build because these are collective strategies that are necessary to move the needle. We do need people who are going to be engaged in, in part party politics, whether that's inside the Democratic National Committee, you know, the Democratic Party, or whether you're talking about third party politics. If you're an independent, if you're Green Party, we do need people to work hard to help build up our local parties and movements. Like here in Georgia, um, once I finally get some time cleared up someplace, it'd be really great to talk to the Georgia, you know, Green Party folks, because I know one of the things they're getting up is to look around this opportunity school district nonsense we have coming up here in the next election. So are these, there are these issues that directly affect our lives at the state and local level that we very much need to be aware of and organizing around. Like opportunity school districts here would give the governor, you know, certain access. It's almost, you know, it's almost similar to the, the the way I've read it from what it's proposed, it's almost similar to the emergency managers they have up in up in Michigan. Um, I, I understand what people might say in theory could be good about having such autonomy, but at the same time, we see in practice that there are a lot of issues, particularly when you don't have you know actual buy-in and support. Um, so we we definitely need to continue to move forward. We definitely need to make sure that we're active and engaged, that we're moving forward and that we're building. Like, how do we, how do we work? Okay, even if you are someone who's progressive and you decide that, okay, I think that working within my local party, building up and taking it over is the right thing to do. I know several folks out in Washington State have done that. If you guys check out Project Sanity, they've talked about it plenty. Um, you know, that is, that is okay. I. That's fine. But are you, can you work with other people? You know, can you make sure that you also are with other people that you are, you know, building across that party line? Because there are going to be some things that are going to need creative solutions that are not going to be followed by just following the strict party narratives. Because at the end of the day, these parties are about themselves and about the first and the people second. And it shouldn't be that way. And not to say that everybody within parties, within politics are like that, but a lot. And that's why we got to all continue to be active, engaged, and really 
trying to change, push the needle and change the dialogue.